So here we have Kabir Khanna, who has who's currently studying medicine at UCL. So Kabir, why don't you tell us how did you prepare for the admission procedure at UCL? Okay, hi. Um, so for a bit of um, context first, uh, for medicine you have to take uh, for medicine in the UK at least you have to take uh, an entrance exam and do an interview for all but one of the unis. Um, the, the, there are two entrance exams the, um, and depending on which uni you're applying to, you take one of the two. So for UCL, you take the BMAT exam. Um, and also for all, all um, applicants to UK unis, um, be it medicine or other uh, courses, you have to write a personal statement. So, um, so that so for medicine, for me at least, there are, there are three components. There's the BMAT, there's the personal statement, and there's the interview. Um, first thing I did was uh, get my personal statement done. Um, that's I think three or four thousand characters, um, where you kind of detail your experience in medicine, um, what extra curriculum. Oh, so yeah, um, maybe a sort of shadowing you've done, some reading you've done about medicine, and most importantly, what you've learned from them. You know, they want to. Uh, the, the admissions people want to know that you've um, you've reflected and you've taken some lessons out of your experiences. Um, you know, maybe when you read a book or, or, or you or you're um, shadowing at a hospital and you notice somebody was one of the doctors was doing something really well or really badly. For, um, and what did that teach you about the, the, the career? What did that teach you about your own interests in the field? Um, so you, you talk about experiences, you talk about um, um, maybe some sort of volunteering you're doing, what extracurriculars you've done, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and one thing that I found very useful with my personal statement was to give it, um, give it to friends, give it to family and ask them to read it because, um, you know, even if they are not, if they don't have a medical background, they can at least look at it with an ob ob objective view, um, and kind of tell you actually this sentence doesn't sound so good or, this doesn't. This point doesn't really make sense, or or you you should elaborate on this point you made here, but because it's a good point, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's one of the tips I definitely um, give to people applying is that just just send it out to people, um, let them read it, but make sure that you've kept your own voice. Make sure you're, you're, the message is not being distilled. So that's for the personal statement. For the BMAT, the exam, um, you can go online and find uh, books. So like a big chunky textbooks with questions, with guides on how to answer the different sections. I think one's an essay, one's science knowledge, and one is just general kind of IQ sort of questions. So um, the big one for that is just being able, is just practicing, um, practicing the sort of getting used to the format of the questions. And these books are great because they have a lot of sample questions. Um, I think the content itself, you have to know it and you have to study it, but it's not terribly difficult. It's more about, being able to understand the question, what they're asking, and um, doing that under the time pressure. The essay is, I think, um, one page in 45 minutes or half an hour, so that's, that's time pressure. And for the interview, um, similarly, you can go online, you can find the sort of questions they're gonna ask you. Um, obviously, you can't really predict what they are, but questions like, why medicine, why UCL? Those ones are likely to come up. I think um, I, I think I got asked why why am I applying to UCL, and there you talk about maybe the style of teaching or or, or the sort of culture uh, at, at the uni. Um, I talked about my brother because my brother went to UCL, so he told me about um, maybe like the anatomy, for example. Um, some unis they allow the students to dissect bodies, and some unis have an have a a teacher dissecting it for them, so the students don't get any any actual like uh, get their hands dirty really so those are the sort of things you want to you want to talk about and you you, you know you, i recommend you go online you find the sort of questions they would ask um keep reading the news because often they ask uh, ask about health um topics in the news so i mean i'm sure covid is a is a pretty big one uh, these days for me in my interview they asked me about the winter crisis in the national health service in england because in the winter there are a lot of cases and there's a lot of burden on the NHS. So they asked me about that and I had to uh, talk about like how I felt about it, what solutions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's good to be, I mean, it's good to be aware in general as a person, but especially for these interviews, you want to be reading the news, et cetera. So those are the, the main tips I have off the top of my head for the, 
three main aspects and then obviously you have your grades and stuff and that's you know you want to be doing well in school yeah okay great so which other universities other than ucl would you recommend to study medicine um so i'm gonna I'll, I'll i'll talk more about uk unis because those are the ones i applied to and those are the ones i did my research for but i'm sure there are great unis in the us and ireland singapore australia etc cetera, etc cetera. um so for the uk um obviously the big names you, you know you're going to get a quality education the oxbridge ucl imperial kings etc but you also want to look at um the style of teaching and this is a personal thing i can't say you should go for, you, you should go for this type of teaching or that type of teaching because that depends on your own preferences um so ucl is a very traditional style of teaching it's a lecture it's predominantly lecture based so They'll, they'll give you a lecture, you have to make your own notes and you have to go and, on your own time, consolidate them. But some unis uh, have this thing called problem-based learning where they'll put you into small groups, give you a kind of clinical case or a clinical problem and using your own learning about these cases and about these conditions, you apply that theory in a practical, um, in a practical way. And for some people that's, that, that works for them. So, you really want to do your research into the style of teaching because these things really make a difference. Um, are you an independent learner? Maybe then traditional is good for you, but are you, do you work well? Do you need to apply the theory to remember it? Then maybe problem-based learning is good for you. Um, there's also what I mentioned earlier about anatomy, there's dissection versus prosection. Um, but at least in my experience, in my first year, anatomy wasn't so important. I think in second year it gets um, more important, but, um, yeah, yeah, I'd say that's about that's about the advice I would give. Okay, great. So, which subjects do you think UCL is known for? Um, so as a university, I think it's it's a very it has a lot. It's a very large uni. You know, it has um, sciences, arts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think the ones that it is. Thing is, I don't actually know uh, much about other courses. I'm basing my answer on kind of rankings. And I know, for, so for medicine, it's, it's excellent, um, top 10 in the world. I know for law, I think it's better than Oxford. Um, and I know for education, it's best in the world, in the world. It's not just the UK, but in the world. Uh, having said that, you don't want to be basing your choice entirely on rankings because Rankings are not made, uh, are not specifically necessarily made for students. They're also made to to um, judge the the university as a whole, and and then that that's including its research and then postgraduate stuff, which doesn't apply to you as a as a um, as an undergraduate student. So rankings are a good place to start, but take it with a pinch of salt and do your other research. Um, but I can't really uh, offer much more than that because I don't really know much about other courses or other subjects. Okay, no problem. So have you done any online courses? Um, do you mean before applying for uni? Yeah. Um, online courses, good question. Uh, I don't think I did, no. Um, yeah, uh, online courses can be quite nice um especially in like interviews and personal statements because then because because if you can talk about that you can explain that yeah i've actually um i've always had a passion for medicine and and it was and you know i did this course and it really like um deepened my desire to get into this field or or you know deepened my interest in certain um speciality for example um but in terms of like doing courses to um, get a head start. I think if you if you want to, if you're interested in, if you have the passion for it, go for it. But it's by no means important or necessary. Okay, great. So, what guidance would you give students who are thinking of studying medicine? Um, okay, so medicine is not like many other careers in that. Um, you know, like it's like like I'm I'm thinking like maybe like history. History is a pretty like 
if you're studying history, for example, you have, after you graduate, you, there are multiple different fields that you can enter. So by studying something like history, you're still leaving your options open for many different career paths, like law or academics or, or something, or consulting, for example. For medicine, that's not really the case because first of all, it's six years, so it's a big commitment. And second of all, um, you know, you're, you're, if you're going into medicine, if you're doing six years, you're probably going to be um, one. You're probably going to work as a doctor. You know, I think most people do end up, um, yeah, working as doctors. So it's very important that you a acknowledge that this, like, by locking in this 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 application for medicine and and this future path, you you need to know that it's hard to diverge unless you you know drop out or you or something like that. Um, so you want to be sure that medicine is the is the right career for you because you know it requires commitment right from the start. Um, and so I'd say if you you know I mean it's it's hard to like expect like a sixteen year old or seventeen year old to really know at that age what they want to do. Um, some do, some many don't. Um, and I I just say try and get as much experience as you can. Um, Read books. Read books by doctors. Read books about you know bio biographical ones, uh, or about the field in general. Um, some authors I recommend is Atul Gawande, uh, Siddharth Mukherjee. So these guys are excellent, and they and they kind of give a good insight into um, into um, the field of medicine. So read books. Try and understand what a doctor's life entails. You know the the commitments you have to make, the sacrifices, because usually it's not really a nine to five job. You know either there's a lot of stress placed on you. You, know, you. you literally have people's hands, like lives in your hands. Um, you, you can't just like leave work and then switch off completely, right? Um, so it's important to understand that. Um, in terms of the, the, the doctor's routine, I would recommend, if you can, um, getting some sort of shadowing opportunity. Um, maybe if you know a doctor or your parents know a doctor or there's some, there's some program that your school does or that you can find online to just shadow doctors, follow them around a hospital for like three days, four days, five days, a week, just to get an idea of, of the nitty gritties of their daily life. And that, because because it, we're not really exposed to like the entire life of, uh, of any, any profession. We, we see doctors on TV and they're all glorified because they're coming, saving the day. But like, there's actually a lot more that goes on behind the scenes that won't make it to TV. Or, or when we interact with doctors, that's only the front facing part of their job. But there's more that goes on behind the scenes as the team meetings, as the paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you do want to get as clear a photo or as clear a picture as um, as you can about the life of a doctor, really. Um, what other guidance would I give? Um, yeah, just just I mean, volunteer, you know, just just see if 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 you have that compassion too, because it, you know it's it's a it's an emotionally taxing thing, and and you you will be exerting a lot of compassion. Um, so just just make make sure like you're 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 set and and you're committed to this um, field before you go into it. And I'd, I'd say that's the most important thing, and things will follow from there. Okay, okay, good. Thank you so much for your advice and I wish you all the very best. Thanks, you too.